Hi, everyone. I'm John Lieberman, and this is I'm Thinking Of, a show that tackles the hot button B2B issues of the day. And on today's episode of I'm Thinking Of, it's I'm Thinking Of Account Based Experience and Beyond. And we have the guest that you would want for this topic, John Miller, the CMO and Chief Product Officer of Demand Based, joining us, who just wrote the clear and complete guide to account based experience. So, John, Let's jump right in, and I'm actually going to use one of your quotes to launch us. You write in the new Clear and Complete Guide that, quote, ABX is the proper evolution of account-based marketing. When done right, it will outperform every other growth strategy for your company. That's a bold claim. So let me ask you, why account-based experience? Yeah, well, so I mean, first of all, just being account-based is a proven strategy for, for driving growth. It, it just makes more sense. If you're going after other businesses, you know, why not focus your time, energy, resources on the you know, biggest accounts that are going to be the most valuable? And that's why we saw the rise of account-based marketing. It, it just makes sense for marketing to be account-based when sales always has been account-based. But there were also flaws in the early versions of account-based marketing. You know, I used to describe account-based marketing or ABM as fishing with spears. You, know, you go identify those big fish you want to go after, and then you go after them, regardless of whether they're interested in talking to you or not. And one of the ideas behind account-based experience or ABX is that, to be honest, it doesn't feel very good to get poked by a spear. And the way account-based programs have traditionally been run it's not very customer centric. It's really about which accounts we want to go after and we're going to go after them kind of no matter what. ABX brings in more of a concept to the, co the concept of the customer experience. Where is that account in its journey? What's going to be the right set of interactions to have with them now based on kind of what matters to them at this point? And so you get this, you get the benefits of the precision and targeting of traditional ABM, but you also get the benefits of engageability and relationship that you do from kind of the customer experience side of things. So that's why I say it's the best growth strategy available. And you talk in the book, John, about that magical moment of connecting at just the right time. Talk us through a little bit about that magical moment. Yeah, so, I mean, Buyers today don't want to be sold to until they're ready. And they're going to do everything they can to actively avoid unwanted sales calls and, and emails. But you know, Gartner research shows that there is a moment in kind of every buying cycle where that buying committee starts to actually realize that either they need some help to kind of frame the problem or at least help to kind of understand what the different solutions can actually do. Now, if you're a vendor and you wait for somebody to come to your site and fill out a form saying, contact me, you're almost definitely kind of too late to the process. So that magic moment is the ability to identify and know when that account is entering into that kind of research phase when they actually will want to talk to a salesperson, but before they've actually come to your site and, and filled out a form. And the cool thing is a lot of the new technologies that ABX makes available makes identifying those magic moments possible and it makes them coordinating and engaging the accounts at the right time possible. And you talk, John, in the book about the styles of ABX. Can you talk us through just a bit the styles? Sure. Yeah. ABX is not a one size fits all strategy, you know, and, and, you know, the ITSMA has done a lot of research into this and identified, you know, almost different tiers or, or ways of doing. It. So at, at the very top of a pyramid, you have true one-to-one -one ABX, which is for your accounts that might be worth two, three, four million dollars a year. And this is your truly bespoke style of one-to-one -one, where each interaction with that account is customized and based kind of deep research. It's expensive, it's hard to scale, but it really works and it's worth it for those really, really big accounts. Step down from that, you have your one-to-few style of ABX. This is more of a micro-segment 
approach, if you will, where you're going to kind of create clusters or micro clusters of say 15, 20, 25 accounts that maybe have similar business problems. And you're gonna go after them in a very focused way, still kind of highly personalized, but kind of an order of magnitude small, you know, if you will. This might be appropriate for your accounts that might be worth two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars a year. The third level is then the one to many style. Uh, this you can have accounts in the hundreds, you know, easily. And you know, this is where a lot, a lot of companies, this is sort of what they do when they practice ABX. Because it's for your deals that are maybe $100,000 a year, $150,000 a year, uh, which a lot of companies have. This is going to have you know, broader programs, lighter personalization, more use of technologies like intent data and advertising to sort of focus your efforts on the subset of those accounts that are in the magic moment. Uh, and then the bottom of the pyramid is just what I call targeted demand generation. We can debate whether that's really account-based or not. It's you're, you're doing your traditional programs like webinars and emails and so on. You're just focusing those efforts onto a targeted list of named accounts. The key is that there's no one style of ABX that's right for everybody. What matters is to practice the style of ABX that's right for your deal sizes. And then to make sure, and then you can you can practice a mix of the styles. And that's actually best practice. Is so, you know, you can have someone to fuse some one-to-ones and some one-to-manys and making sure that you aren't trying to do too much, you know, that you can't therefore deliver, actually execute on the strategy. So John, the account journey, as you write in the guide, is a fundamental concept of account-based experience. Talk us through that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, the essential principle of ABX is aligning how you do your go-to-market to where that account is in, in its journey, you know, and as we sort of talked about, you don't want to be kind of call having salespeople call accounts before they're ready, you know, kind of when it when it's the wrong time. And so we think a really good practice is to, you know, map out the stages of the buyer's journey, and then use those stages to guide uh, how you want to kind of interact with the account. It's almost like I think the yard lines on a football field. You know, the, 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 the ball itself doesn't take a linear process towards the end, game, end, end goal. It moves up, it goes forward and back and all around. But, you know, what yard line you're on tells you a lot about what kind of plays you should run. Mm-hmm. Now, if you're one in goal, you're going to probably run the ball, for example. And so those, the account journey stages are your similar lo- yard lines. If you have an account that is the very top of the process, it's a qualified account. It's one you know you want to go after, but they haven't shown really any engagement with you. Your goal should be to just be building your brand with that, with that company through awareness, through entertainment, emotion. Let's say you have an account that is further down the process. There's some engagement with you, but still not showing the magic moment buying signs. You still probably don't want to be reaching out to them you know, from a sales perspective yet, but you can do different kinds of advertising. You can move from emotion to logic with things like thought leadership and best practices. And then when you see that account in that magic moment, they're, they're in a buying cycle or about to be, now you're going to reach out to them in a very different way with in coordination with sales and sales development. And then even once you're in a sales cycle and it's an open opportunity, you know, now there's, you have to think about the full buying committee. And how do you support building consensus and validation across multiple personas? So those are just some examples, but you, you know, the way you want to interact with the account, the right experience for the account, if you will, is dependent on where that account is in its journey, what yard line it's on. And so that's why the journey is such a central component to ABX. Also talk us through, John, the, the five ABX processes build, find, engage, close, measure. Talk us through those briefly, if you would. Yeah, so what, once you understand the need to do ABX, you know, I get all questions like, okay, how do I actually get started and, and, and implement it? So, you know, those five ABX processes are a good framework. So the first ABX process is build. And this is really all about building your account-based foundation. You can't be account-based when your other systems aren't. 
And so you need to have a single view of the accounts and the people of those accounts that serves to do all your analytics, your segmentation, uh, your reporting and so on. And so fundamentally, this is a data problem. It's collecting all the first party data that you have about the accounts sitting in your marketing automation, your CRM, your email, augmenting that with third party data that demand base provides like firmographics and technographics and intent data. And then building that single view of the account that marketing and, shares can, marketing and sales can share uh, so that you, you know, have that core foundation. Once you have that in place, you can then go to the other steps. So the second process is find. And find is all about identifying the accounts that matter and grouping them into the right tier. So it starts with actually you know, defining your styles of ABM for your business and what tiers are you going to have? And then using, you know, your entitlements, which says how you're going to treat each account to really serve as the constraint and let you know how many accounts can you really have? You know, if you, you can't, you shouldn't be able, you probably can't have 50 uh, one-to-one -one accounts. You know, most companies just can't handle that. So you define your entitlements for your styles. That tells you how many you can have. And then it becomes you know, a question of actually prioritizing and ranking the accounts to pick the best ones for each style. And that's where we really like to recommend a methodology that we call FIRE or F-I-R-E. So the F in FIRE stands for fit. You know, this is, these are the accounts that are in your ideal customer profile. These are the accounts that are the ones you wanna go after, you know, that look like your best customers. The I, that stands for intent. And this really tells you which accounts are in market for your products and solutions right now. Who's researching your category? Because those are obviously going to be better accounts. They're showing more interest. The R, that stands for relationship. And relationship is all about your contacts with that account. Do you already, do your, are your sales reps already emailing them? Do you already have meetings scheduled? Maybe you had an opportunity there that you closed six months ago. All that really matters in terms of understanding and ranking the accounts. And then lastly, the E in FIRE stands for engagement. And this is, is this account spending time with you? Are they coming to your website? Are they downloading your content? Are they you know, attending your webinars and, and things like that? Each one of these ingredients in FIRE are important in of themselves. When you mix them all together, you get something that we call pipeline predict which actually tells you which accounts are in market right now. So you take all that information, give that to your sales reps and let them start go and actually pick and prioritize which are gonna be their one-to-ones, which are gonna be their one-to-fuse, you know, fuse, which are their one-to-many's. One, one and that's how you do that process of finding the best accounts. So the third process in ABX is really all about engaging the accounts. So we know who we want to go after. And now we have to connect to them. And really there's like sub processes to engagement, you know, step piece, step one there. You got to understand the account. What's going to be relevant to them. What's going to be interesting to them. Uh, you know, and you, that's both based on like data science research as well as just manual research, because at the end of the day, your best ABX outreach is going to be the most relevant outreach. Once you understand them, you can then start thinking about personalizing your interactions, whether it's personalizing the emails, personalizing the web pages. And now it's time to actually start reaching out to them. Uh, advertising is a huge piece of ABX because it's such a powerful channel that you can use to reach all the members of the buying committee, even if they're not coming to you. But it's not just advertising. You also want to orchestrate other channels as well. You want to connect in your events, your emails, your, your sales development reps, your direct mail, your content syndication, and using you know, plays that actually make all those different pieces work together. So that's, you know, the engagement is really a, a big piece of the whole thing because it's such a multi-channel uh, you know, process. So then the, the fourth process in ABX is close. And close is really all about the, the marketing sales alignment and interactions. You know, one of the reasons I like the term ABX instead of ABM is that it isn't just marketing. 
right? It is the entire customer experience, whereas ABM is obviously just marketing. And so this, the alignment with the sales team is really important. So how do you make sure that the sales team is looking at the same data as marketing? How do you proactively alert the sales team about key insights in their territory? And how do you start to actually trigger and coordinate interactions uh, between the marketing and sales teams through automation, through stand-ups, you know, things like that. And then the last ABX process is measure. And measurement in ABX is different from measurement in traditional marketing because it's more about the quality of the relationship with the account than it is about the quantity of the interactions. Or as David Ogilvy says, don't count the people you reach, reach the people that count. And so in ABX, you are measuring things like engagement with the right personas you know, at the right accounts and how that engagement drives accounts to move through the account journey uh, towards the outcomes that you care about. It's, it's an account-based set of metrics, not a lead-based set of metrics. So John, yeah, there's a lot of content there, no doubt, and a lot, lot more in the book. But one thing that I found personally fascinating about the book was you can almost use it as a how-to guide. There's worksheets in there. There's step-by-step -step what you should be doing. And you actually write in the book, think big, but start small. So what's your advice to companies to get started? How should they get started? Yeah, that's totally right. I mean, we even talk about kind of a freeway analogy uh, in the guide, you know, because there is so, you know, I wanted the book to be a roadmap. So, you know, sure, you can get into the, you know, merge into the merge lane and you're, you're, you're going a little slow. And as you get comfortable, the guide also has the details for how do you go faster and faster and faster. So some, some of the quick wins that I recommend people do to kind of get started quickly is number one, define those styles of ABM for your business. You know, because that tells you how many accounts you can have. And then number two, do the work to actually pick the accounts that marketing and sales agree on aligned to those different styles. Doesn't sound like rocket science, but honestly, a lot of companies fall down there. I've seen companies that just say, here's 5,000 accounts. That's our target account list. We're doing ABM. It's a lot better to sort of really group those into the one-to-one, -one, the one-to-few, the one-to-manys and do that work because the work is what drives marketing sales to be in alignment. From there, you know, implement a process that I call ABM standups or ABX standups. Get a recurring meeting going between your marketing team, your SDRs, if you have them, and your sales team, you know, just to talk about the accounts that that rep has. What's going on? What are we going to do to, to, to engage them? You know, you can start piloting things like advertising. That's a really easy way to dip your toe in the water uh, to actually start engaging with these accounts. Um, and then lastly, I would just start alerting the sales team with some basic insights like, hey, here's accounts that are showing intent for our products. Here's accounts that are, uh, we think, in market for our solutions. And just getting those that basic alerting in place can go a really long way. And you mentioned advertising, John, so we'll just throw in a little plug. The next episode of this show is a deep dive into advertising and what it means and how, how customers can get started. But before we let you go, John, you know, you've spent a lot of time and energy on this book. What do you hope that people take away from this? And, and I guess, what do you hope the legacy of this book becomes? Yeah, you know, I, I, write, I write in the guide that I come from a family of teachers. And I think that I, just, I have this desire in me to teach. Uh, and so, you know, that's why I wrote the guide is I just wanted a, a place where I could you know, help share best practices, you know, with, with the market. So what I hope people take away from the guide, first of all, is, you know, the why of ABX. Like, why is this important? Why is it something they should be thinking about and, and embracing? But more importantly than the why is the how, you know, and I really wanted to give people a roadmap for how to get started quickly with, with ABX, but also kind of the, the vision of how they can continually evolve and you know take their ABX processes further and further and further to best in class. Um, so if 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 a company, you know, if even a handful of companies learn how to do that, uh, then I'll have considered the guide a success. 
And you just mentioned the word evolve, John. So let me ask you this. Even in the title of the guide, it's account-based experience and beyond. So anybody who knows you professionally or personally knows you're always thinking a few steps ahead. So what is the and beyond here? Can you give us a little taste? Yeah, I mean, even though the book is a sense we call the clearing of the guide to account-based experience, I really do think it's a roadmap to the full B2B go-to-market process. Uh, you know, because, you know, it talks about the data you need to, you know, run, you know, the account-based experiences. It talks about the sales intelligence that you need to sort of get marketing and sales work on the same page. It talks about the advertising capabilities, which for some companies, that's a whole independent thing. And so really, you know, this, you know, I think the, the book is meant to be, you know, a guide for really how do you run your B2B marketing yeah, your B2B go-to-market process uh, today and in the future. Great. Thanks, John. Very comprehensive. Good stuff. Appreciate your time, John. Thank you.